Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about the history or the past of our moon. But specifically we're actually going to be talking about how close the moon was to earth and what the earth was like when the moon was just formed. This is the question that someone asked previously and I really wanted to answer because unlike today the moon was actually much much closer. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So once again, we've destroyed the moon, or at least the surface of the moon, and things here don't look very well for us anymore. Let's actually go to the past when the moon was just created, what it actually kind of possibly looked like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to explore how far away the moon was and what the earth was like when all of this just happened. So welcome to early earth. This is circa 4.5 billion years ago. And what happened in this particular period of time is that Earth received a collision from a Mars-like object uh, that uh, had the name of Theia. So here is this collision, we're going to simulate it. And following this collision, the um, amount of material that was released here started orbiting around our Earth and then eventually coalesced into what's known as the Moon today. Now back then, Earth, because of the collision and because it was still early on in the creation of the solar system, was actually spinning very, very, very fast. As a matter of fact, it probably looked something like this. So here is our early created Earth and here is the moon that's already kind of solidified and it might actually receive some more collisions uh, from the surrounding debris. But basically, the Earth here is going to be slowly cooling down and the moon that has just sort of solidified is going to start spinning around it. Now, the rotation of Earth right now is about 6 hours per day. In other words, it's about 4 times faster than it currently is at 24 hours per day. And so, Earth is spinning really fast and the moon is really, really close to it. As a matter of fact, the moon currently is at a distance of about 20 to maybe 30,000 kilometers away from Earth. That's about 10 times closer than it is today. So, what effects would this actually have on Earth? So let's actually accelerate time a little bit and maybe cool Earth down a little bit as well and start um, recreating this early system and talk about all of the potential effects that are happening here. So, first of all, lots of collisions, lots and lots of collisions, both on the Moon and on Earth. And this is when Earth also started to, receiving, uh, to receive a lot of water on the surface as well, very likely from asteroids. Um, from the nearby asteroid uh, belt and also because of the so-called late bombardment. So Earth is going to be cooling down here and as you can see Moon is actually orbiting really really fast. One single orbit here currently takes approximately... where is the orbital parameters here? Nine hours. So today we know that uh, one single orbit of the Moon takes um, approximately 28 days which is what we call a month and uh, back then, the moon orbited once in about 9 hours, much, much faster, over 70 times faster than it is today. So, because it was so close to Earth and because uh, it was spinning so fast around the Earth, there were two potential very important effects that moon and Earth were kind of causing to each other. One of the major effects was, of course, tidal effects, tidal uh, forces. So we don't really um, see them that well here, even though the actual tidal forces will show up under here, so tidal power. Um, even though it sort of shows, it doesn't really tell us how powerful these were. But uh, the tidal effects were m about 10 times stronger, or even more than that, um, compared to today. So in other words, there were a lot of earthquakes, a lot of um, tsunamis, a lot of various really interesting, strong tidal effects that the Moon caused on the planet Earth. And because of this, the surface of Earth was always under a lot of stress. Now, you might not see it here because basically uh, Earth is still kind of forming, uh, but there was a lot of sort of surface stress that the Moon caused because it was so close. The other important effect... Oh, here comes another collision. That was cool. The other important effect was that because it was so close, it actually stabilized Earth's rotation. 
Uh, and what I mean by that is that normally a planet that sort of orbits around the sun by itself and it spins um, starts wobbling back and forth. It starts wobbling and its axis changes every few thousand years. This is what happens to Mars usually because its orbital axis can change by as much as 60 degrees or even more than that. Earth, on the other hand, currently has an uh, axial change of about 23 degrees, and that's because the moon is already far away. Back then, though, and let's actually add some water here. Back then, though, um, Earth actually spun or was spinning a lot less. It probably had a much more stable um, axis. Oh, no, I'm causing my planet to become too big. I need to actually lower this and lower the temperature once again to about, let's just say, 10 degrees Celsius here. So here we go. Uh, so yeah, the Earth was spinning much less and because of this it had very, very stable seasons. And because it had such stable seasons, it's quite possible that this is actually what's kicked off and what started life on Earth because it had very predictable, very stable seasons, a lot of activity on the surface that um, sort of reshuffled the crust and a lot of things happened that made um, the life on Earth um, more likely on a molecular level. So, because the moon was so close, it created conditions very favorable to the formation of life. And that probably destroyed some of that life that was created, that collision that you just saw. But anyway, so because of uh, all of these conditions, specifically a stabilizing moon, um, strong tidal effects, and because of the way Earth was actually firming early, early on and was receiving a lot of collisions with basically brought water to, to the surface, um, it really sort of created a perfect habitat for life. So right now we're going to just... So right now we're just going to slow down this a little bit and you get to see the water as it sort of starts forming on the surface here. And this was the what early Earth may have looked like. So, okay, maybe the continent was actually joined all in one piece and it was a mega ocean. But um, it spun really fast and the moon was really, really close to it. So you could actually easily see the moon uh, that was much, much bigger than it is today. So here is what the moon may have looked like in the skies of early Earth. And this is before the moon received all the collisions as well, so it was actually, uh, it looked different as well. It was a lot more smooth back then. Now with time though, what of course happened was that moon started to slowly drift away. And as it drifted away, it started uh, spinning slower as well. And at the same time, because of the tidal effects it caused onto planet Earth, so let's actually start moving the moon away, because of the tidal effects, it also started slowing down Earth. And so Earth started spinning a lot slower as well. So its spin started to increase. It started to basically um, slow everything down. So what used to be six hours per day, and here we're going to maybe move the moon away to its actual position that's approximately 300,000 kilometers away maybe 299,000. So basically about approximately one light second away uh, from the position where it used to be. So here, so here's how far away it is now. This is how far away the moon moved in the last four something billion years. And uh, all of these tidal effects caused the Earth to slow down to 24 hours per day or one day per day. Now, obviously, through these 4 billion years, the Earth has changed quite dramatically. It acquired um, different continents that are much, much different from what you see here. And it, of course, acquired a lot of complexity on the surface, including very complex, it's probably the most complex life we'll ever find. Us. But, on the other hand, obviously, Earth uh, is still changing and so does the moon. Uh, the, both the moon and the earth will continuously change for the next few billion years and the moon will continuously slow down earth, slowing down day even further, and it will continuously move away from earth as well. And at some point, uh, possibly near the end of um, our sun, the moon will be very, very far away and the earth will move much, much slower. And by that time, it's very possible that Earth might not actually be habitable to life anymore. And uh, one of the reasons why it might not be habitable is because if it spins really slow, 
It's possible that the very important feature of our planet Earth, and here we're talking about the magnetosphere, which I'm about to create, will actually... Oh, I don't know why it's not showing. Let's make it show. All right, it doesn't really show for some reason, but the magnetosphere that's uh, present around Earth, and I'll show it to you in a second when I'm, when I'm going to go to the real Earth, which, okay, we might as well do it right now, actually. Let's go to the actual simulation of Earth and Moon. Here it is. And let's enable the magnetosphere. So this is present Earth. And let's briefly talk about what happens to the future Earth. And here is the magnetosphere as it appears in the actual solar system simulation. It didn't appear before because there was no sun, obviously. I made a mistake of not placing the sun. And it does appear as soon as you have the sun because this is how the magnetosphere is formed. So this very important feature might actually disappear in the next few billion years as Earth starts orbiting, or not orbiting, but spinning slower and slower. And as it slows down its spin, because the moon slows it down even further, uh, it might actually lose the ability to produce magnetosphere. And that obviously means that what protects us from, um, from the solar radiation right now might actually disappear completely, thus stripping Earth of life. But this might never happen. It's just a speculation. Anyway, so in this video, I really wanted to talk about how close the moon was to Earth when it formed and what it was like and what kind of effects it sort of caused on our planet and why it was so important to the establishment of life. Hopefully you learned a lot from this video and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and who likes to learn through video games and come back tomorrow to learn something else you may have not known before. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Let's stop the simulation by Exploding our planet Earth once again. See you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.